In this video, I'm going to talk about scale. Now, I'm talking about scale for CAD and 3D printing, and you're probably wondering, why do I have a semi-truck here from uh, Melissa and Doug? Well, that's because I, uh, I uh, built or I drew a toy truck in Fusion 360 that I kind of want to match and scale to this truck. So this one, the Melissa and Doug truck toys, they tend to have exaggerated proportions. Mine, not so much, I guess. Well, I guess like this, it's like a cab over. But anyway, um, I want my toy truck for my kids to scale with this Melissa and Doug semi-truck. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a measurement. Now, when I scale this, when I scale my truck toy, I want to make it so that the width of my toy matches the width of the Melissa and Doug toy. Now, in real life, uh, over the road trucks are typically about eight feet wide at the at the bumper and the fenders. Uh, so that's why I'm going for. That's why I'm assuming right here because when I drew my model in Fusion 360, um, it's it's supposed to be eight, about eight feet wide at the fenders and bumper. So let's see how wide this truck is. Let's see how wide this toy is, shall we? So everything along the front here is the same width. I mean, the wheels are kind of wobbly, but I'm just going to measure here across the front. And I have a width of about 6. Point, let's see, 6.7 centimeters. So... I got the measuring bit done. Let's move on to the CAD. So here's the toy truck I've been working on in all of its disassembled glory. This is actually a uh, simplified uh, toy of a 5-ton army truck, specifically uh, M813. So this is the one that I want to scale down to you know, the, the size of that Melissa and Doug semi-truck that uh, I showed you earlier. So to scale this all right, I want to take a measurement in AutoCAD. And to do that, you click up here on the measure button. So let's see how wide this is. So to measure, you can actually click on any edge or facing. Well, so there's one side of the fender there, and there's this other side of the fender over here. So I'm going to click here and over here to figure out how wide my truck is and it shows 80 millimeters right here 80 millimeters over here so so I've got 80 millimeters to work with but the truck needs to come down to 6.7 centimeters or 67 millimeters so I'm going to close this here and when I do this I have to scale everything so everything's all spread out here so I'll just drag my big orange box over everything and everything's all selected hooray for selections and now I'm going to go over to modify and go down to scale I'll wait for the scale menu to show up it counts 14 entities which is all the things here selected uh, it says ask for a point to select Know, to scale from and you know, it automatically selects it. I don't see any reason why not to change that. So I'll leave that be. Scale type uniform. So that means that I change this value here, the scale factor, everything in the X, Y, and Z directions is going to it's going to all come down in the in the same amount as opposed to non-uniform where you can actually where you can actually change the scaling like, independently. So why don't we play with non-uniform for a second so you can see. So what happens if I scale to Z, make everything tall? Or I can make everything a pancake. Whoops. Like that. Uh, if I scale in the X, yeah, make it really flat. Scale in the Y. Yeah, you can do some really weird things uh, if you use non-uniform scaling. What happens if I change back to uniform? 
Alright, so now, if I just toggle back the uniform, it just brings me back to where I start. And the scale that you start from is 1.0. So, if I want to scale my truck down from 80 millimeters down to 67 millimeters in width, and have everything scale accordingly, I've got to adjust the scale factor. So, that's when I bring up my calculator here. And I just do a calculation. You start off with what your scaling, what your re reference scale is. So 67 millimeters is what I want to scale down to. And then you divide that number by the number you want to reduce. So it's 80 millimeters. So just to walk back, we're trying to get the 67 millimeters width from 80 millimeters. So 67 millimeters divided by 80 millimeters gives me a factor of 0 0.8375. So that's our new scale factor. So we'll reduce this from 1 to 0 0.8375. Hit enter. Yeah, you see, uh, even before I hit enter, it just shrinks it down. To lock it in, I'll hit enter. And now everything is scaled down. And just to check, I'll get the measure tool here, click on that side over there and this side over here and we are at 67 millimeters so one thing to keep in mind with the scaling is that it does adjust everything adjust the thickness of your of, you know stuff like for example uh, these walls here on the cargo bed were a lot thicker than they are now uh, so if you might have to adjust for that. I think I can't re actually recall what their thickness was, but they definitely were not 2.5 millimeters. They were thicker than that. Oh, if I got reduced by 20%, I think it was actually closer to like 3 millimeters. So if you want to keep certain like wall thicknesses you know, thick, then you'll want to adjust those here after you're scaling. So that's that's something else to keep in mind. So if you're going to 3D print something that you're scaling, of course you can scale within like your slicing software like Kira, which is my favorite one to use. But if you do that, you won't be able to necessarily change the thickness of your walls. Or, you know, Kira has its own default, so you can tweak the settings a little bit. So it always has like a minimum shelf thickness, if I remember correctly. Uh, but at least if you scale everything in your CAD program, like this Fusion 360 here, you can you can adjust the size of the holes, the thickness of your walls, all that stuff after the fact. So I'm just curious, how big is the hole here? That's a diameter of two millimeters. And if I just check my ruler here, because I'm just going to use like a wood screw to kind of fasten these wheels to my body I'm actually going to have to increase the size of that hole otherwise I try driving that screw in there it's going to split the plastic apart at the layers so there's like I said it, those are things to keep in mind when you when you rescale models in the CAD you're going to have to make sure that the wall thicknesses and other body thicknesses are where you want them, that your holes are the size you want them, and everything. But uh, So I'm going to make those adjustments and, and print this truck. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, post any questions you have in the comments and I may answer them in another video. And remember, Anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. So keep learning, keep designing, keep making, and be proud of your work.